Welcome back to another episode of The Agent Goldmine, where today Shelby and I are interviewing Chastity Rosales, and she is a killer. She's a team leader with Keller Williams, and today's topics that we cover are whether you should partner with Place. We go into the nitty gritty of partnering with Place, what that looks like as a team leader, and hiring the right agents as well for culture, for your vision, and all of that. Cassidy is out of El Paso, Texas, and she's been an agent since 2014. She was the rookie of the year at her brokerage and then took off from there. She currently leads a team of five agents along with two transaction coordinators, two operations managers, virtual assistants, along with her partnership with Place. This past year, she and her team closed 168 transactions and 45 plus million in volume. She specializes in military relocation and she is a sergeant major in the Army Reserve, 28 years and counting. So, gold miners, let's welcome Chastity Rosales. This is The Agent Goldmine, where you'll find real talk, shit talk, and ambition. We're here to build real businesses and be more than your average agent. We want to know what the killers are actually doing within their businesses, the reality of it. All tactical, no fluff. So we're here to find out. Please share and enjoy. Chastity, if you were starting over today, in today's market, knowing what you know now in building a team, would you do it? What would you do? I would, because I think as, as we see how real estate evolves, partnerships is the buzzword now in building big businesses. If you notice all these agents that are building these gigantic businesses, it's with people and systems. You cannot do that alone. You have to have somebody. I, I just look at the new agent starting in business today and I'm like, holy hell, how did, how did I do that? This seems so scary. Yet we did it and we built a great business and we built a great business fast. But could we do that again today in 2024, what we did when we started in 2014? And my answer to that is, I'm not sure. I mean, it would be harder and it would be grind. So I would say early on, I would partner earlier with people that have something built big that uh, went with what I was building. And I think one of the things that we make a mistake of as agents is, we don't know what we're building. We don't know where we're going because we're so new and school doesn't teach us that. People aren't teaching us that. They're not teaching us how to ask the questions and interview. Most people go find the cheapest brokerage or where their friend went. They're not actually going and being purposeful and in interviewing the broker based on what they're trying to build or they're not going to find other people building what they are trying to build. You first have to know that. But if you have no reference, how do you do that? You got to have somebody in your life that you said, OK, this person is doing it well. So partnerships and the other would be social media. I did not do social media. I've never been big techie and I didn't do that early on. And if I'd have done that early on, I would own that platform now versus being behind the curveball this much later. So let's, let's get, let's dive deep in, into what your leverage is, what your team looks like right now. Okay. There is four admin. We got a fire TC. We got a listing TC. We have an ops director and then we have an ops assistant. That's a virtual assistant that kind of helps all three of them. And then we now have five agents plus me that are out there kicking butt. Last year we did, we closed 168 transactions with just three of us with our three admin, which was crazy. And the year before that, 267 during the crazy time. And we still only had those two TCs, which are gold. Like people and systems are your gold in building a huge real estate business. 267 transactions the year before that with three agents and two TCs. Okay. Are these TCs salary or per transaction? They are salary and they were getting bonused on one of them still gets bonused on per transaction our accountant has asked us to go away from that and make, make it based on goals. So we've transitioned one of them out of that. And the other, I don't know, she's grandfather and she has a great job and acts as my personal assistant too. So I may keep her on that, but definitely you want to keep those costs low that you can maintain and make it where it's based on their transactional goal because they are part of helping you hit your goals as well. They're not just over there in the corner doing busy work. They have to be cheerleading on these agents 
they have to be holding them accountable to their goals. And they also have to be out there looking for business to promote you because they have referral opportunities. Well, just adds even more income to them and helps you help them build their goals. How did you find these agents that are killer? Most of them are military spouse. So we already know they kick butt anyway, or they're veterans. And to us, that is the best population because one, our military family, they're already built to be leaders. They will do what you tell them to do. That's how we succeed. And then the spouses, they, they have so much resilience and grit because they pick up every three years and move their whole family. So those actually came to us through most of them. We, they were our buyers or a buyer's friend that recommended them. And so we love during the buyer transaction, if it is military family moving here, our agents are assessing through that transaction. Hey, would they be a great fit for a team? Because one, we'd love to hire them. And two, we know what their capabilities are. And so that's how most of them come to us. I think that the word team gets thrown out around a lot. And people have such varying definitions of what it means to partner, or what it means to be on a team. So are you, you're, you're a Keller Williams. Are you following the millionaire real estate agent book, the red book, or what does team slash partnering mean to you? I love that question because there's so many variations. And if you're on social media and you're reading in these crazy Facebook groups, when they mention teams, there's so much hate for them because people have had such bad experience with them. One, people do not build them correctly. They're either built like here, we have builder reps and they need bodies to be in those homes, you know, to appease the builders or two, you have the folks that it looks good on social media to say, I have a team, but nobody really steps back and reads the red book. Yes, I've read it multiple times. And yes, we built that, uh, our business based on that. You know, we are waiting on part two because some of those financials, the economic model has changed. But also I was so blessed early on to be uh, able to meet greats like Ben Kenny and Tim Heil and Wendy Harrelson and Wendy Papazan when I was a team leader for Keller Williams. That was my second year in business. They recruited me to be a team leader. And I got the ability to meet those great agents and see them building this thing right and big. And I came back, I was like, holy cow, like this is a business. Like a team is a business. You are running a whole business. You need to understand that. And you're responsible for the lives of those people on your team and their families. So you want to make sure you are thinking like a corporate leader and you're building this thing per that red book. But first, you have to know what you're creating and you have to care about the people on your team. Don't just say, come be with me because it seems cool to talk about the people. You have the responsibility to coach and mentor these agents to hit their goals. And I think that's where we go wrong. And I don't think I necessarily blame the agent building a team because I think it's just a lack of people and education. Somebody's not teaching them the right way to do it. They got somebody just saying, oh, man, you can make money off of these agents. Just get them on there and let them do the work for you. And that sounds good. But if you don't have the systems and the people and the other tools behind it, they, they fail coming. You mentioned Ben Kinney. Are you partnered with Place? Yes, we partnered with Place about a year and a half ago. I'm so curious about Place as well. And I don't think, Ali, I don't think we've gone deep into Place with anyone, which we don't have to do today. But um, could you briefly, for those who might be listening who've never heard of Place, um, side note, I've only heard amazing things from people who've partnered with them. Like my good friend, Ramon Cassis partnered, Landon Stone and our Five Pillars community have partnered with Place and they rave. They're like, it's the best thing ever. I want to say, did Veronica also? Yeah. Veronica, everyone's doing it. So (laughs) what is Place? Why did you decide to partner with them? Thank you for listening. Out of respect for your time, we want to make this show as valuable as possible for you. So if you have any feedback on how we can improve, please let us know. DM us at Allie the Agent and The Shelby Show. We say Place is our company. It's not a brokerage. And it doesn't matter what broker you're with. We're broker agnostic, but we call it our company. And so take it like it's a a back-end support system for you because They help us create all our back-end operations. They help us train our agents. They help us train our operations team. They do our P&L every month. They provide tax professionals. They provide, I mean, we have Fortune 500 people in our marketing department, in our lawyer department, in our accounting department, amazing people that are helping you run your business that you couldn't afford as a single agent. So the concept is this partnership is the top. I mean, we have almost... 
300 of the top teams now and over a thousand with all our uh, agents with us is I call it, we are investing our money together in a place that helps us build bigger businesses and offer opportunities to the agents on our team and the admins on our team that we would not be able to do alone. And such things as like 401k, they have access to that. We have stocks and our agents and our admin have access to those stocks. Healthcare, if they don't have track here, which we love because it makes it easy, but one of our agents doesn't have that anymore. Her husband retired and they didn't keep track here. They pay 238 bucks or something crazy a month for their whole family, including dental and eye care. I mean, you can't, that's like unheard of. It beats, it beats track here. And so those are some of the perks of being with place, not to mention as an operator, you get people like Ben and Chris Suarez and, you know, other people like Veronica that are greats in our industry that you are learning from. And we're on a call with every week to help us build our business and build opportunities together that we would not be able to do alone. So this is like a co-op, you know, (laughs) It's like a co-op. Yeah, basically, um, yeah. Okay, I didn't realize that. So how? So when it comes to teams participating and paying for a place together, like a team leader and the other agents on, is everyone paying evenly? And being that everyone kind of runs their own business, you know, everyone's at the top of you know their their business pyramid. How how is it? Like I'm sure some people require more assistance at certain times, like more assistance from the tax professionals, from the legal team that you mentioned, how is that spread out in a way where, because this all encompassing umbrella can help the solo and the group and the team leaders and the broker owners. Are you able to elaborate on that? So the team model, if you all know, team model traditionally is agents on your team is split 50-50. And we we still have that on our team. So our agents are 50-50 with us. And I say we invest 50 in them. And with place, the operators are the partners with place. And so you have a threshold of requirements. You either need to sell 100 homes a year or a million GCI a year to qualify to be an operator with place. So it's just not anybody can come in and say, hey, I want to join place. And if you're a solo agent, I don't know the threshold, but there's a threshold of your GCI and your sales. And we have, I don't, I forgot what they call it, but these solo agents basically are in waiting to become operators, like they're grooming them to become operators. And an agent on our team has the ability, we have several agents throughout place that have been on teams and they've graduated into operators because they wanted to build their own team and their team leader and place helped them do that. So, I mean, the opportunity is endless. It really depends on what the individual wants. And I have not seen any, I don't know how they spread the wealth in helping us. I just know that there's never been any degradation in help when I needed it. I always call, like I called our attorney. I wanted to change my team agreement, not the standard place one. I wanted to add that we have a three-year protection versus a two-year protection because we are a military family and that's our normal rotation. So it makes sense to protect our business for three years from an agent leaving our team and competing against us in the market. So I just simply emailed our attorney and said, Hey, I needed to say this. And this is why can I do that? He said, yes, we can. And in 24 hours, I had my updated team agreement. It is amazing. It's so cool. I'm curious about, okay. So the the agents on your team are 50, 50 splits. And then you as the operator, the team leader is a 50, 50 partnership with place Correct. uh, on any, on any additional proceeds that basically your side of the split, your 50% right right, is 50, 50. Right. Our okay. So, but the salaries, but you are your TC, your ops director, your ops assistant, you know, those people that comes place isn't paying that. That's place. Fine. Yeah. Place does share in the cost of that with us. Like yeah. a 50, 50. Yeah. So any of our expenses, so they have a system, we use a Divi card and they have a pay bill system and we put all our expenses in there. We can't go crazy. They're not going to prove everything right. We got to be good stewards of our money. And they watch that every month and they watch our staffing money and they coach us on that. They coach us how to um, maintain what our profitability should be based on what our numbers are, what we're selling. But going back to that is they do share the cost of that. So whatever we submit, that comes off of what we we share with place. Right. So if I made 20,000 profit this month and we had 10,000 in expenses, 
that comes from that, right? That balances that. And place actually handles all of our payroll. So that helps on our taxes, right? Because we no longer have that on our side. They took over that. They took over the accounting for that. Make sure they're paid. Make sure all the labor laws are, we are protected from that. Make sure salaries are protected because there is, most people don't know this, but there's a uh, comp versus non-comp employee. And if you are one or the other, you have to pay them a particular amount based on state. So there's all kinds of labor laws that we were breaking before we joined place that we didn't even know. And so when we did our own board and they look at all of this, they help us get that right quickly. And also helps on our taxes because we get, you know, our 1099 based on what we share. And then they have Tom Wilwright as one of our tax professionals. You all know Tom, Tom Wilwright, tax, tax-free wealth. So they teach us those principles and it was a game changer for us moving. Now we are in S Corp. The accountant that I had the last two years would not help me do that. Just said I didn't qualify simply because in Texas we cannot get paid in our LLC if we were not a broker, which changed this year, thank the Lord. But they wouldn't help me around that. And the place accountant was like, oh, there you can. Like you can, you can legally, and this is how. And so she said last year, if I had been with them and did the principles they taught me to do, I would have saved 50000 on paying taxes last year. Damn. And people don't understand that. When, when people talk about teams, the only thing people get hung up with is I don't want to give 50% of my money to somebody else. Well, honey, the team is giving you 50%. You're not giving the team 50. We're investing 50% into you because you're not coming with a book of business. You're coming into our business. So I say, change the mindset and say, I'm investing 50% of me into you. And you're investing 50% into me because this is what a partnership looks like. It has to be a win-win or no deal. Everybody wants to come in. Oh, just let me pay you a certain amount on my sphere but give me all your sphere and I'll give you that. It doesn't work like that. Either your partnership mentality and you want to do more together or you're not. So we need to get past that whole, I would never give you by 50%. That's why you sitting there doing 30 deals a year. If that. Dude, they're lucky if they're doing 30. Most, no, lucky, they're probably doing lucky. zero. 12, <laughs> they got 12. 100%. Yeah, because we're back <laughs> to when the average is six. We went up to 12 during COVID because buyers were falling out in the sky and sellers. Yeah. But now those same agents that started during COVID and thought they were superstars are now struggling. And that's no mm-hmm. dig on them. They just did not have the right people and systems to help them create that momentum and continue that momentum to continue to build a big business. I always say, what's 100% a zero? zero? Zero. Or somebody may say, hey, if I do 20 on your team, I could leave your team and do 10 and I'm fine. Okay, that's great. Know what you want to create and go do that. If 10 is okay with you and that feeds what you're trying to create in your life, I applaud you. Go do that. But if you do want to have a bigger business, then find somebody to help you do that. But make sure you interview. Don't just jump. Say, hey, Chastity. I want to make $100,000 this year. How can you help me make $100,000 this year? What systems, tools, leads, resources do you have to help me create that? That's the first question you should ask a broker. You should ask a team. I want to create X, Y, and Z. Now you tell me how, because I'm interviewing you, but I'm also interviewing you, right? This is a two-way street. We interview agents all the time that we don't invite to be on the team because they are not a fit for our culture because you have to protect the culture, your vision, and what you're building. If not, they will wreck it and they don't care. They'll wreck it and leave you because they don't care. So you have to care and you have to find those ones that understand the concept that we go further together than by ourselves. You have mentioned it a couple of times now, systems. So how does systems work? And you can tie in place or not, but I'm curious about systems and like the storage of data slash the training of your agents and admin, which this tied back to place. I know I'm getting confusing here, but that's like part. And then afterwards, I want to talk about the lead wheel down the road, but I'm just basically yeah. so excited. Okay. That lead gen wheel thing. is amazing, right? Yeah. That is dude, money. So... That lead gen wheel is money. Yeah. Um, okay. So systems, brevity, you know, you know, Ben owns brevity. So we were paying with brevity before we came to place, but as a part of being part of a place partner, we don't pay for brevity. So we get that, we get a ton of things that we don't pay for 
to run our businesses that we paid for before that now are that come with place. So that's another benefit. And so Brevity is one of those. Not only that, now anybody can go pay for Brevity. We do pay for the leads, the pay-per-click leads. That's all we have to pay for for that. But we also now have Gabby, which is an, an ISA. She's an AISA. So Gabby, we only have her as place partners. Gabby, we put Gabby on the lead. And now Gabby is texting the lead and converting the lead for us. The, you know, the leads that sit in there that nobody wants to call in the lead pond because it's not quick and fast and I don't want to nurture. So we now have Gabby Nurture, and that's another system they've added to us. Um, plus all the systems of support that we get that we've talked about earlier. But in our business, we use Brevity heavily. Dot Loop. I love Dot Loop. I know other people use other sources, but we actually pay to use Dot Loop because I still believe that it's the best transactional system and it does interface with Brevity and we can use Brevity contract to close and it makes it really simple for our admin staff to set tasks and reminders that other agents are piecemealing together with other things that they use to do that, that we've tried in the past that didn't work for us. My other favorite system, you, you can't leave out ChatGTP, right? The new paid version of 4.0 is out and it's amazing. I use it every day. Wow, and so they pay for your chat GPT? They do when we put when we expense it. Oh, okay. They help okay. Pay for, right? any, any systems we pay for like that, we expense the place. And that Got comes it. back, you know, part part of that comes back to us. And then visual stager, you talked about people still love to talk about listings. I don't know if everybody else marked it, but listings are hard right now. One, we're starting to see those people that overpaid during COVID get into rotation. So it's tougher to have those conversations and remind them that hopefully their agent explained to them that this would come a time that you might have to have a conversation that you overpaid and you knew it. But here's the thing. Somebody overpaid on your house where you were coming from. So you just took that overpayment, and rolled it into your overpayment. So really the buyer that bought your house helped you overpay for that house. It's just a mindset thing, right? In trading. But we use visual stager for our virtual staging. So every vacant house, we virtually stage the master, the dining room, and the living room because we are a high military, you know, we're Fort Bliss, second largest military installation in the country. So we have a lot of remote buyers. So we really do well on our marketing piece to paint the picture of that house virtually. And we do that through that stage. And so that's one of our favorites now that I encourage people to look at because it's inexpensive. I think it's $10 a room to do that. And it goes a long way and it goes a long way in your listing appointment. Oh my gosh. That, okay. Wow. <laughs> That's a lot. I want to talk yeah. more about this Gabby chick. How does she nurture leads? Can you, can you just elaborate on like when she comes into play and then when her role ends? Okay. Great question. So when the, when we've done our part to nurture leads and we call it our 12 days of money, because we are calling, texting, and emailing that lead every day, right? So when we've done our part as the agent, then we tag Gabby. It's a tag. We tag Gabby. And then Gabby takes over. And Gabby just starts texting with them in different ways to try to get them to respond. And once they respond, then Gabby can customize to the conversation based on what the buyer or seller is saying to her. If after so many texts, if they don't respond, Gabby removes herself or if Gabby has converted her and now we get involved, then we can remove Gabby and we take over the conversation to finish the conversion and set the appointment. Got it. Okay. I love how AI is just so exponentially growing, you know, like Elon Musk successfully did his little neural link thing. We're just, oh man, it's just, this shit excites me. <laughs> okay. I want to go toward culture or is there anything else that, that you didn't cover with place before I ask about culture fit? Oh, no, not unless you all have another question. It's just, it's just amazing. Um, yeah. I encourage people to get educated because we see people misspeak about what it is and they don't, they don't even know. They just hear other people regurgitate it, but you know, you, you can't expect small minded people to understand how big minded people think. So you just got to give them a buy on that. That was good. Yo, your quotes. <laughs> yes. Hell yeah. Tweet that shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What does it look like? Because you mentioned culture. I mean, culture is everything. And plus, like, mm -hmm. you have to know you as a team leader or a broker owner, you have to know what your goal is in order to attract the people that you that will help, you know, bond together to take to take you there. How 
do you hire for the right culture? Maybe that's starting with goals. Like maybe what are your, what are your goals? And then therefore, how does that relate to the interview process or how you know when someone is a right fit? Yo, real quick, this podcast is not free. Cost of admission is sharing with a buddy who'd benefit or throwing it on your Instagram story. Tag us, we'll reshare that shit. That starts way before we even ever have the first conversation with them because I'm looking at them on social media first because they tell you who they are on social media. You you watch how they post. If they post in silly, immature, non-professional stuff, like we had this one girl that wanted to be on the team and every other post was F that, F that, talking about her ex and the girlfriend and doing stuff to the girlfriend. That was a like, nope, you already know. They tell you about who they are on their on their social media. So we start there. Their social media is good and uplifting and, you know, a little bit funny. You can be a little bit hood sometimes. I'm a little bit country, a little bit hood. So we get it, but you got to be professionally hood. You know what I mean? So we watch that and then we invite them in. We invite them in for a, a, a just a conversation, you know, I may call them on the phone. And my husband, Jim, my ops director, who is amazing, couldn't afford to hire a brain like his. He does those initial conversations with them because I'm a little bit different than him. He's a little bit more forgiving on some things. I have a sixth sense about people that I get back here. And sometimes that can skew the process. So I let him go through the process and then he kind of gives me feedback. And then he does not tank the pool. He just says, hey, go in and meet with them. And I go and sit and finish with them. And then I just know from that and what he told me and We do a life story with them because we want to see how people has handled loss and how they came back and how they've won and how they view how they lost. Are they a victim mentality or are they a victor mentality? So we're looking for all these different language, which we learned how to do. I'm not plugging Keller Williams. I just, that's my broker and that's where I learned from. But we did, they have this class called Uh, career visioning, where they taught us how to hire and how to have these interview processes and how to weed out and weed in. And it's not saying you're not a good person, you're not a fit, you're just not a fit for us and you don't match what we are building here. So we use the career visioning process to do that. And that last piece, that life story is is a big one. And then we require them to do a thousand dial day the first week, right? We call, that's what we do. So I ask them if you, you know, if I told you today, Shelby, to call a thousand people, what would you do? Would you say, let's get it? Or would you say, oh, no, let's go. I know you'd be ready to go. But some people just shriek down. They just shriek down at the thought of having to call people, cold call people and say, hey, you want to buy or sell? You sign up on our website. But that is one of, you know, that's one of the biggest indicators. And then. After that, we invite them on and we do what's called a pre-launch. So we date for 90 days. 90 days, I got to love you. 90 days, you got to love me. It's both, right? I want this person to succeed. If I can't coach them, I can't help them succeed. And that's not fair to them. And so if we make it through that 90 days, and sometimes, a lot of times we don't get through the 90 days. We know in the first 30 days, hey, we love each other. And then we put them in launch, which is the system through place. They built our agent training. It's amazing 90-day training. And they go through this launch program and they have all these homeworks and some of it's based on Ignite and things that we've learned in other places. But they like they have to view 10 homes a week. They have to write their scripts. They have to practice their scripts. They, you know, they have little milestones that they go through with a place employee that is actually taking them through these lessons. And then we are helping enforce that through our script practice with them and shadowing and appointments. And we are OCD about communication, education, customer service. So we're we're instilling that in there. They're having appointments with the title company, the lender, the insurance person, the home warranty person. They are getting educations from every part of the transaction to make sure that they can go out and provide value, not just to the client, but to anybody on the file, because we say our customer service extends to everybody, the agent on the other side, any vendor involved. And we are commonly educating agents on the other side of the deal. Okay. Thank you for explaining that. And, and, and being more like, how do I say this? Like tactical on your sixth sense. Cause everyone's, you know, you just get a gut feeling. And I'm like, dude, I don't get 
any gut feeling, you know, I wish I had a gut feeling. Yeah. So thank you for providing some more guidance on that. I want to go to the golden nugget that we ask every guest on our podcast to provide and yours is an amazing golden nugget. Can you elaborate on what you shared with us? And for the audience, in case this is your first time listening, theagentgoldmine.com, you get all the resources for free. Hit it, Chastity. That's amazing. I was looking at all of those yesterday. So we provided you a lead gen wheel. So many times people set goals. We were talking about this yesterday. We set goals. Hopefully you're setting goals. We call it a GPS and a 411, but you got to set your yearly goals and then chuck those down. But how do you then do the goal if you don't know where to go for the goal? Like lead gen is our goal every day as an agent. And that doesn't have to be just cold calling. That looks different. So we have provided you a wheel to give you a, a ton of ideas on how to lead gen. That can be cold calling. Your sphere is number one, your past clients. You can have a Facebook group that you're learning, you're creating it from. Like Tally, you can do Instagram. It, it goes so far. We have a girl that got a divorce on our team and she's building a running group for divorcees to run through the emotion of divorce. That's going to be one of her lead gen activities. You just have to be creative. So hopefully you take that, you look at the ideas, and then you look at what you're trying to create and say, all right, now I have some ideas. Don't try to do them all. Pick the things you like, because if you love your job, you never work a day in your life, right? So pick things that you can lead gen on that you love and then build that into your 411. What are you going to do daily? I'm going to call 10 of these people a day. I'm going to go drop by five of these things off a day. And then the key to that is consistency. You can't stop doing it after first week because you're tired of it or it's not sexy or it's not fun. Consistency and follow-up is the key to building your business, whether you're a single agent or on the team. And so I have it pulled up and I'm looking at it and I'm curious about on the, the lead generation, on the actual wheel there in the middle, it's divided in half. And on one side, it says agents, one to two deals a month. And then it says business, one to two deals a month. What, what is that actually, what does that mean? So that's, that's for teams. If you're a team model, what the philosophy is, is that Uh, if I'm providing you two deals a month, you should be bringing two deals a month yourself from your sphere for a total of four closings a month. And that's an amazing life for agent. Okay, perfect. And it just shows you the concept around that. Mm, Okay. Gotcha. So the split in the middle doesn't mean that only the things on the one side are from the team and the, okay. Okay, I'm with you. It's just the activities, yeah, to help achieve both of those. What's your favorite part of the wheel or what part of the wheel helps, do you you find helps agents the most? Whatever they're willing to commit to. Oh, that's good. That's it. You're right, Chastity, you're right. What for you, Chastity, personally has worked best in your own lead generation? Being education-based, being open to, to learning from people. You know, I'm still in the Army, been in 28 years. I'm still a reservist. I'm a sergeant major in the Army. I think that they, the leadership principles that I've learned over time instilled something differently in me, a different fire to get after something. So just what I was telling you when, you know, we tell somebody to do something, most often our our, our veterans do that better than somebody else that has, doesn't have that back, that background. When I first got into my broker, my my team leader said, hey, you have to do X, Y, and Z. I didn't know that I didn't really have to do it. I had the employee mindset still, right, from a government employee. So I went and did what he told me to do. Thankfully to him, you know, I had somebody that invested in me. He even made me do the um, buyer presentation to him. And he painted a picture. If I didn't pass that, I couldn't even go work with a buyer. I didn't know any better. So I studied and I presented that and I killed it. And he's now go call all these people and go do this and go do that. And I just did that. And then I had, you know, like I said, the ability to meet these amazing people my second year. And it just took off from there because I I knew what I wanted. I knew when I sat in the room and I saw the number one agent month over month, it says you got a vision what you want, right? And I'd see that slide up there and I'd see the same guy every month just number one. And I'm like, I'm going to be there. My name is going to be there. Now that's me out of a market center of 680 people. I'm consistently number one or number two and sold units for that because I knew what I wanted, y'all. 
you got to know what you want. You can't want what Shelby wants. You can't want what Allie wants. You can't want what Chastity wants. You're different. What do you want? Create that and then use people like us to help you find the people to build that. And you can do it. Oh, I love that. I, I, I'm i reading a book, 10X is Easier Than 2X. And it talks a lot about that, about how, you know, it, it's it's harder to just double your efforts because that means just grinding harder. That just means working more hours as opposed to 10X because it's a fundamentally different mindset change. Like it, you can't just grind your way to 10X more. So it's like very similar, but you, but also you don't even know where you're going to go until you have that clear vision, whether it's income, transactions, your name on the board, more time for yourself. You know, maybe you just want to step away. So I, I really, really like that. What for you, what does your, what does your 12 month look like? And what is your future? Like, what is your end goal look like? Apple listeners, this short pause is to ask you for a review. Here's how to do it. Back out of the specific episode, go to the page where you see all the episodes, scroll down, keep scrolling. Perfect. Now tap those five stars. Thank you so much. Back to the show. My end goal looks like sitting on the porch of my house in South Carolina near the beach, doing whatever I want to do and not having to worry about money. That's what it looks like, traveling, giving money away. I want to, you know, one of my goals I'm working on now is I've always had this passion around single moms because I was a single mom. I wanted to have a program for nighttime daycare that moms are going to school or working and trying to be better, but they don't have support for that kid at night to have a safe place. So I've always had the mindset of having a nighttime daycare or facility that these parents, these moms could drop their kids off because so much abuse happens Every mom wants an amazing dad. They want a Cinderella story. I don't care what they say. You want a good family or or not even a dad or mom, whoever you choose for your kid. But so often we choose based off of that want and there's predators out there, you know, preying on these single moms. And then, you know, the kids, there's a lot of abuse there, both sexually and physically. And so I'd love to have something like that. So that is something I'm working on now because money is only good for the good it can do. What's the point of having a bunch of money and selling 300 homes? Yeah, I want to sell 500. That's my next goal. But what's good of selling that 500 if I don't take people with me and I don't help the people out there that hasn't had the blessings I have to be who I am to create that? Beautiful. Fucking love it. Uh, I have a follow on question because I'm right there with you. I'm on the porch, man. We're hanging out. You don't know. We're going to the beach together later. It's great. (laughs) But my question is, so if that is, you know, kind of the end where you don't have to worry about money and in that, that visual, are you planning on building, continuing to build your business to a place where you replace yourself and keep the business? Do you plan on selling the business down the road or do you plan on investing? Like what, what, how does that, what does that look like roughly? No, right now we're working diligently on building our, our, our another stream of income through title, you know, JVs, joint ventures, like mortgage company, title companies, insurance companies. That's really a bigger goal than keeping a real estate team down the road. I, I, I don't know what it looks like. It's harder to me to sell a real estate team. I, I don't know. So we have some thoughts around that. I have a, a girl here. I trust that she you know, runs my team behind me. I'd love for her to own this team one day if she decides to stay in El Paso or if, you know, one of our, one of our team members decide to stay here because we get, we, their spouses, right? They transition out. But if they retire here, that would be ideal to help them build something through it. I don't, I don't know if I would keep it. Honestly, I really would rather have other streams of income through these JVs and through what place is helping us create that we maybe don't have to. And I just sell real estate here and there at the beach to supplement my traveling habit. While you guys are on the porch, I am on the hammock. I'm reading a fiction book. Also not worrying about money. (laughs) Just potato chips. I don't even care. (laughs) That's the freedom. That's the freedom. That's people don't think about. That's the freedom. You can grind it out doing, you know, whatever you do as an individual. But what if you found five amazing people that you Hold your money together and you all now can be on the porch together. That's that's how you got to think. You got to think bigger. Yeah. You can't think about, there, I don't want to spend the money. Right, right. Or I'll do it. I'll do it later when I have X amount or when I have mm-hmm. X amount because it's never going to feel, yep. it's never going to feel right. Yep. I actually posted, one of my goals is to 
I'm gay. And my parents did not have a good, not have a good experience with me being gay. And yeah, so tough for elders. It, oh yeah. Elders, Hispanic, Catholic girl. All yeah. the things. So I had a hard time like in middle school and, ele- and what do you call it? High school. So my goal is to provide, or at least either all or some a tuition for college. Cause a lot of people get kicked out, you know, people in the LGBT community, yeah. they get kicked out of homes all the time. And therefore they don't have a career. They just end up, you know, doing something yeah. where they could be making more. So that's my goal. And I posted it on my Instagram saying what my goal was, but I guess the wording that I said it was and people, people understood it as I was asking for money and I was not asking for, I'm just like publicly posting what my, my goal is. And dude, I got hit yeah. up. They're like, Hey, I want to give yeah. how, like, where do I give money? And I was like, Oh my gosh. See? So yeah. So you might be able, the point of me saying this is you might be able to just ask for like, that is such a good cause what you're doing. And so you might be able to do it, not just with your own money, like pool money together. Well, and start. Yeah. And, and you know, I'm starting with place. We got 300 of top agents in the country. I'm starting there and with Ben Kenny, nice. if you're watching this, you're going to be right. Heck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I will tell you talking about money. One of the biggest regrets of that, that, that I know we're wrapping up, but I, I would be remiss not to say one of my biggest regrets in my business was not hiring an assistant early on. My team leader tried to get me. I was working a year to first year and he was like, hey, you could double that if you hire somebody. But I had a scarcity mindset around money and I'd always been a government employee and the check come on the first and the 15th. So that scared me. So it took me longer to realize what that leverage did. But when I did my first, when I hired my first and leveraged, I went from 55 transactions that that year in six months to 91 the next just by that one piece of leverage so don't be scared but you got to have a mentor you got to have somebody to help you do it 100 percent. before we head to the wrap-up is there anything else that you want to that you want to mention no i think we've covered a lot i'm here you'll have my info if i can help anybody always here or you got a question about building a team or mentoring something or just single agent that you want to build something with just a admin that's okay too just get clear yeah. on that. Wrap up question number one. What is your favorite app or tool that you use, either for your business or personal life? My favorite app is right now Brevity because of Gabby. She's making our life easy. Dude, we love it. Gabby for you. She sounds yeah. great. <laughs> okay. What events are you going to in the next 12 months? Next week, I'm going to Vegas to family reunion. And then we have, I have a women's retreat in Mexico in October, and we have have several military trips, as you know, that <laughs> that helps me too. And then Built How, Place has Built How, that's for everybody. If y'all have never been, I would encourage you to go. It's amazing because we have people from all different companies and they have amazing guest speakers that are top notch. So I would encourage you to go. That's what we have for the next 12 months. Heck yeah. How can we, like Shelby and I, and the audience, how can we help you in your business? You know, the love language of an agent is referrals. That's how we do everything. People and money help us create everything. And we need both all the time. So, or if you know anybody coming to Bliss looking for a job, or you know anybody in the space that I'm trying to create for the single. And where can people find you? I, my email is chastity, C-H-A-S-I-T-Y at P-C-S-ElPaso.com. P as in Papa, C as in Charlie, S as in Sam, ElPaso.com. And my cell, my personal cell, 915-873-2772. I love it. Yes, El Paso for all the referrals. And if you're looking for a job, thank you so much, Chastity, for coming on. It was awesome having you. You, you I, I'm glad that we went and did some topics that we have never spoken about before. So thank you. You are a freaking boss. I love watching you on Instagram. Oh, what's your Instagram handle? Chastity A. Rosales. That's my name on there all together. One word. And you too. I love watching you. I've been following Shelby, as you know, for a long time and so excited about what you have created. And I'm just honored to be a part of this and that you all asked me to be a part of it. Truly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. And for everyone who wants a copy of The Golden Nugget, theagentgoldmine.com, give her a follow, give us a follow in case you haven't already, and have a great day, be a bro, and share this show. 
Thanks so much for listening, dude. If you want the golden nugget that this guest provided, see the show notes or just go straight to theagentgoldmine.com. That's where we keep all our resources for you. Till next time.